story time about my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. By the way, we're calling her Alexis. So me and Alexis have been friends since we were babies. Our moms were best friends, and they sent us to the same school, had the same friends and everything. But the thing with Alexis is that she was super jealous and insecure. Whenever I did anything without her, she get very controlling. We got to high school, we started to drift apart, and I made new friends. But, like, after school, she'd always tell me that she didn't like my friends and that I'd be better off finding prettier friends. I would tell her, yeah, they might not be the most prettiest, but I like them. One day when I go to school, all of my friends are ignoring me and are giving me dirty looks. When I go to lunch, one of the most annoying boys walks up to me and tells me there's a rumor going around saying I was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school. This is part two of my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So, like I said before, this kid comes up to me telling me there's a rumor going around saying I was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school. And in my head, I'm like, so that's why nobody's talking to me? So, I went to my best friend at the time which started the whole mess, and I didn't know. I asked her if she heard anything about this going around, about them wanting to jump me after school. She laughs at me and says, I should have kept my mouth shut. I get completely irritated because it's like, now I don't have her support. After school comes, and everybody quickly runs outside. Me, I'm stalling. I'm very slow at my locker. When I come outside, all of my friends are lined up, and everyone gathered to see what was about to go down. I'm running out of time. Y'all let me know down below in the comments if y'all want a part three. This is part three from my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So like I said, I walk outside and everyone is gathered around. I walk up to one of them saying all the rumors that they heard aren't true. One of my friends said, you know what you said and pulled into my hair. And at that moment, I tried to swing back, but I just get jumped on. And they literally jumped me. After the whole thing was over, my best friend Alexis helped me. We went to her house and she cleaned me up and said that those girls were fake and that I should have listened to her earlier about not being friends with them. And I was confused on why she was helping me because she laughed in my face when I asked about it. But I left it alone because at least she was helping me and maybe she was right. Fast forward two weeks later, one of my friends who jumped me reached out to me apologizing. I asked her why and who even told you I was talking badly about you. Guys, believe it or not, after I get done speaking with her, I found out that my best friend Alexis lied and told them I was talking badly about them and the girl even sent fake screenshots of messages between me and her. Story time on the time I made my mom cry. So here's the backstory. When I was 10 years old, my mom and dad divorced and my dad remarried. I lived with my mom majority of the year, but through May and July, I stayed with my dad and stepmom. My dad and stepmom didn't have any kids together, nor did she have any prior to marrying my dad. My stepmom truly treated me as if I was her own daughter. I think my stepmom couldn't have kids of her own. So fast forward to Mother's Day. I was spending it with my dad and stepmom, and my dad thought it was a good idea to get my stepmom flowers in a card with a personal message from me showing that I cared for her even though she she wasn't my real mom so I did it because I felt sorry for my stepmom not being able to have kids of her own my dad ended up recording the video of me giving my stepmom flowers and reading the card I didn't know he ended up posting the video on Instagram until this happened stay tuned part two on the time I made my mom cry so that Mother's Day, we had a busy day and I ended up losing track of time. And you guys, I forgot to call my mom. Yes, my real mom. And wish her happy Mother's Day. I ended up falling asleep. I was woken up by my phone ringing. It was midnight. The next day, it was my mom calling me. And I remembered, like, man, I forgot to call her or text her Happy Mother's Day. So I felt bad. Like, I didn't even want to answer her call, man. But I answered it. She was crying. And she was like, you don't love me anymore. You only love your stepmom. I was like, no, mom, I love you. And then she was like, I saw the video your dad posted on Instagram. You gave her flowers and you didn't even send me a text. She was so upset, you guys. I felt so bad. So I made a vow to never forget to call my mom on Mother's Day ever again. Story time about how my friend swallowed a glass marble for a dare. 
So when I was 11 me and my friends would have sleepovers at my house and we would always play truth or dare. And one of my friends, we are going to name him Patrick. Now when it was Patrick's turn he would always pick dare. One time I remember someone dared Patrick to stick a very sharp pencil in his nose and he did it. He took the game very seriously. Well the last time we played truth or dare with Patrick things got a little crazy. So when it was Patrick's turn to do a dare, he was dared to swallow a glass marble. And he did it. And then that's when things took a turn. Patrick started choking and we didn't know what to do. We told my mom and she took Patrick to the hospital and Patrick never talked to us again. But that's my story. Story time about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So when I graduated college, I moved into a new apartment. When I first got there, I was moving my things in and my neighbor introduced himself and helped me move a couple of things upstairs. After we had got done, he asked for my number. He said, let's just swap numbers just in case, you know, a fire happens. So I gave him my number and I really didn't think nothing of it. Maybe a week later, he starts knocking on my door and giving me gifts just about every day like teddy bears and flowers. So the next day, I wake up to make coffee and take out trash. When I pass my living room, the teddy bear gift that my neighbor gave me makes a click noise. When I quickly rip the teddy bear open, it's a camera inside. Like for part two about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So, like I said earlier, the teddy bear gift that my neighbor had gave me makes a clicking noise. When I quickly rip the teddy bear open, it's a camera inside and I go into a panic mode. Out of nowhere, there's a knock on my door and it's my neighbor. He says, good morning, it's me again. You left your trash too close to the curb, so I moved it for you. I realized that my door was still open, so I try to run over and lock the door but he just opens it. I yell at him, telling him to get out. He closes the door behind him and says, that's no way to talk to a neighbor. I start backing up. He looks over and sees that I ripped the teddy bear apart. I didn't know what else to do, so I just ran to my room. And he chases after me and pulls my hair. Like for part three. Part three about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So he comes in, I run into my room and he chases after me. Before I could get up, he pulled onto my hair and starts dragging me towards the kitchen. I saw the coffee that I had made earlier, and I was able to pick it up and throw the hot coffee in his face. He starts screaming loud, and I took that chance to run into my room and lock the door. I immediately start calling the police, and from there, it sounded like he ran out of my apartment. When the cops came, they're doing an investigation, and all the gifts that he gave me all had cameras in them and when i told them about my neighbor they did some digging and come to find out that man wasn't even my neighbor he didn't even live at the apartment complex